Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Light of Insight. I'm your host, Mina, and today we have another very special guest, and his name is Master Bhikkhu Kasapa, and he is a Cambodian monk. And I was introduced to Master Kasapa uh, from Chuni, who was on the podcast a few weeks ago. So good evening, Master. How are you doing today? Very good evening, Sister. I'm doing great and nice meeting you. I'm also very grateful to Brother Chuni for introducing me to the platform. Fantastic. And can you let the audience know where, where are you in the world right now? I'm from Cambodia right now, and where I am is uh, the meditation center. It is called the Pasna Durbodi Center of the Kingdom of Cambodia, and it is located in Kadar Province. I mean, yeah. Fantastic. And what time is it right now in Cambodia? Now 6:38 p.m. in Cambodia. 6.38, and right now it is about 8.30 in Tokyo, Japan, so we're uh, two hours different. Two hours ahead. That's okay. Okay. Two hours ahead. So, Master, I have some really um, great questions for you today that I'm excited for everyone to listen to. The first one is I want to hear your story. Where did you grow up, and how did you become a Buddhist monk. Okay, so thank you, sister, again for inviting me, and I thank you very much for your great effort, commitment to to create such a platform for everyone to share their stories uh, around the globe. My story a little bit, uh, I think, quite long, but let me uh, briefly, uh, you know, tell you. So. I was born in a very small village, and but now it is, uh, you know, becoming a, a city, a suburb city to to our capital Phnom Penh. And I have uh, six siblings, and unfortunately we lost our one brother in 2010, and my father passed away in 2012 when I was uh, reading my. Uh, degree in Sri Lanka. So, you know, uh, in 1995-96, Cambodia uh, was, to the best of my knowledge, Cambodia was uh, under development, you know, country. So at that time, the urbanization, the socialization, it kind of very quick, and the youngsters in the society could not take it. So some, they misuse the technology, some, uh, they misuse the trend, you know, there are many uh, trap, there are many, you know, uh, gangsters, you know, in, in the village. So, but I, I kept going to school and, you know, uh, unfortunately my, my father left us I mean, living separately into in, in 1996. So my, I mean, the burden of the family was on my my mother's shoulder. So uh, she 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 had to raise uh, six of us and provide everything uh, in the absence of my father. So I went to school, but you know, uh, it, it's not kinds of discrimination. But uh, I am the fifth of the family, and I have my younger sister. And the entire attention of the family, normally, you know, it's Asian country, uh, focus on the girl, like taking of the girl, because, yes, she is our priority. So I went to school and come back, hanging around with friends. So I had the discussion, you know, my mother had with our family members that I must be sent to the temple for, you know, for more... Uh, study or further education because you know that temples at that time uh, were the place for the boys who were who are from low-income family 
uh, to pursue their study or it kinds of to transform their personality you know it the temples were for the two purposes like for for the boys who are from low income family to study and for the boys to have they have you know like bad character to to change themselves so they must send to the temple so i sent to the to the temple in 1998 and it's a long story before our family decided not to let me to to become a monk but i would call it fortunately there was a monk from sri lanka his name is uh, master omal pesobite and he was an an uh, environmental advisor to united nation and he he led many workshop in cambodia to promote to arrest rest their awareness you know in terms of uh, environmental conservation and buddhist you know education uh, for for the for the monks and for the for the villagers so one day he came to our monastery and he decided to to meet the the uh, the temple boys so fortunately i i went to meet him and but at that time i i could only say how are you i'm fine thank you and and that's all but fortunately there are two mm-hmm. monks from england they can speak khmer very well so they were my translators <laughs> so wow. yeah so they asked me whether i i wanted to go to sri lanka or not i say okay it depends on my family you know that at that time i never say no to my mother my mother's decision i i just follow whatever uh, you know she took i mean decision so he asked he asked me to go to sri lanka i say okay and then the sri lankan man said if you want to go to sri lanka you have to become a monk and my family said it's okay i say it's okay so i became a monk in 2000 i'm sorry in 1998 october uh, 14 like that and, and how then, how old were you in ah, 1998 yeah, I, i was 12 years old 12 years old yep. wow and how old were you when you were sent first to the temple uh same age like uh 12 but but like uh around january or february like that so i i stayed mm. in the temple around like more than 6 7 months like that um yeah. So this is story how I became a monk. So I I went to Sri Lanka in 1999 January 21st. So this is the story of how I becoming a monk. <laughs> that's oh that's so beautiful. You became a monk very very young, 12 years yep. old. Do you mm. remember how you felt when you were that young and you were studying and practicing? becoming a monk do you remember your feelings you mean in, in cambodia or in sri lanka i mean or, or on the day oh. i became a monk yeah both both countries okay. you know like it was a dream no it was a motivation when when i was young that you know when when we were playing you know you know play belief in psychology that that you have to pretend Uh, in some role or you have to act you know some roles when when you play with the kids so i i acted as a monk and when we were very young when i think maybe eight or nine years old i played with my sister with my siblings with with you know with my friends so they were acting like uh, devotees waiting for me to offer food so i i was i, I played as my role was a monk so So, and I wanted to become a monk when when I I were very young, you know, you know, very funny because I can see that monks having good treatment, they have good food, so it, it's kinds of motivation with that. So it was okay for me to become a monk, and you know, like even I was young, I I have kinds of sense that as long as my my mother is happy, I I will do. of what but i can because i saw her commitment dedication to us as and sometimes you know in asian countries you know it's everywhere that this quarrel between 
the father and mother happen in the family. So, so that that was fine for me to to become a monk. And and during my training in Sri Lanka, it was you know that it was a little bit hard because it's a new society, it's a new culture, and I was mm-hmm. with my friends, so I don't know the language, even English, and how not not to know how to communicate. You know, the adaptation is not that good, and the food, everything is new to me. And But I did uh, my best, and we, as monks, you know, everywhere, not even in Cambodia, you have to go through a very strict uh, ru- a daily routine. You have to get up in the early morning around 5 o'clock, you have to meditate, you have to, to clean the temple, you have to go for the arms round, and you have to study. You know, the entire day was for the spiritual practice and for the uh, education. So, and yeah, but but we still have our uh, childhood feeling we can share. Sometimes we play, you know, even we were uh, novices, but sometimes teachers allow us to play, like, you know, hanging around, and running, and, and, and so on. So, wow. so feeling, you know, there are feelings I want to say that miss home, you know, basically, mostly when, when, when it was raining. So do nothing because when we are playing, when we do something, you know, our attention was on other things. But when, when, when it was raining, you have to stay at home. So, uh, and sometimes, I, yeah, I, I miss my mom, my siblings, but... The thing is, as I told you, I, I had kinds of motivation, inspiration from her that before I leave, I left Cambodia, she said, I have nothing to give to you, but I have one thing that you have to study for yourself. So I uh, kept that, uh, you know, advice in mind. I kept studying and, yeah, that, uh, you know, the detachment from the family at the, at the young age is not that easy, but uh, I... I was okay because in Sri Lanka. Mm-hmm. Okay. W- were you able yeah. to visit your family any time? No. Or... no. No. Yeah. You know, it, even to make a phone call, uh, it's, it's not like today we have Facebook, we have everything. And they were phone on that day, but the thing, it, cost, it costed a lot to call. Cambodia from Sri Lanka, to the best of my memory, it took around 100 US dollar to call. Yeah, oh, wow. it, it was very expensive. And then I said, oh, it's no need to call because... And, but I kept writing the letter, but I never get the mm-hmm. response because uh, it's not like in developing country you have the real address for the mail to be sent, and you know, but in Cambodia, in Sri Lanka, they was not that developed. So even the letters were not written to explain the feelings sometimes. But yeah, wow. And, yeah, I, could not visit, I could not visit my I could not visit my family because I had to study, and the ticket, you know, for the flight is very really expensive. And, you know, it's five hundred dollars US. So I think my family cannot afford, that. and so I I. I, read, I, I stayed in Sri Lanka for five years, then I, I, fly, I flew to Cambodia to visit my family. So that's all my story, sister. Wow, beautiful. Thank you very much, Kasapa, for sharing your story. Um, my question now is, you are the director of the International Cambodian Buddhist Center, correct? Yep. Can you please tell us how that came to be and how you became the director of the center and what is this center about okay, okay. thank you sister oh question. and master please keep your okay. um yes okay. thank you thank you so international Cambodian Buddhist center has been established for uh, for providing the accommodation for the student monks uh, who are reading different degrees in Sri Lanka, I mean from Cambodia. There are monks who, who are reading their PhD, their master, their BA. And it's one thing. And another thing is we 
we want to build up uh, re uh, re strengthen the relationship between uh, Sri Lanka and Cambodia again I mean for the good uh, purposes because there are many uh, Buddhist devotees visited uh, Sri Lanka and so we, we we want to create such place for our devotees to stay there and they can travel around uh, to Sri Lanka I mean in, in Sri Lanka so these these are the basic uh, purposes, I mean, of establishing International Cambodian Buddhist Center. And how I was appointed as a exec executive director is, it is a long story. So when I was reading my degree in Sri Lanka, Cambodian monks, they, they decided uh, to build a center, to build a monastery. So they were finding a land. So I have been here, you know, I, I had been here, you know, for 10 years or 15 years at that time, so I know uh, some monks, I know some, you know, the people who are in, in the government. So my master who, who took me to Sri Lanka, he was well, yeah, very powerful monk. So I, I told him our, you know, our vision that uh, we want to build up a center in, in Sri Lanka. So he he provided us a land by, uh, you know, sign, signing the MOU between uh, Cambodian Monks Association and its foundation. So this is how uh, we started the center and this is how I was appointed as the director because, you know, I know Cambodians, I know Sri Lankans, so that, see, this is my, my qualification. So, mm. yeah, and... In, in addition, I we did a lot there. I I also started a project of giving scholarship to uh, Cambodian novices. Uh, I mean, boys who are from low income family, and let them to become a monk and uh, find the donors to you know to sponsor for the ticket to bring them to Sri Lanka, and let them study there. So you know, I have the philosophy that something is better than nothing. Uh, because sometimes when they are in Cambodia, you know, they might uh, be motivated to use a drug, or and, and you know, and so on and so on. So th that is my purpose. So and I mm -hmm. also started a, a child development center in in Sri Lanka. I mean, for special needs children, uh, by my own effort and using my own uh, donation money to run the center. So this is how ICBC uh, has been running. So that's all, sister. That's amazing. What is the name of the Child Development Center? Uh, the name is uh, David Rodrigo Child Development Center and for the special needs children. You know, David Rodrigo is, is oh. the name of the father of the lady who donated the land to the temple. So the center is, I see. is in her house. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I want to add that. I, I also, you know, I, I had a very strong determination that I, I should, I had to start the center before she died. So I did that. So after mm -hmm. I did, I mean, she passed away. So yeah, that, that is story. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. You sound like such a busy person, a monk. So can you tell me maybe the day in, your day, what it typically looks like in your schedule, and how how do you do all of these? How are you running the running the center, and also this child development center, and also practicing and learning and studying? How how does your day look? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we the thing is, as Hmong we have to do everything by our own self. We have to sweep, we have to cook, uh, and because in Sri, in Sri Lanka, we don't have Cambodian devotees. We, and the thing is, you know, other resident monks do, I have to do, I have to do whatever they do, because we have, it's a teamwork. But uh, besides the daily routine, uh, I have to check, you know, uh, the work there, the expenditure and income. I have to check the work of uh, the child 
development center work and I have to create the, you know, the therapy for the children and I have to keep, I have to, I had to keep, keep in touch with uh, volunteers from Hungary. So I have to, I had to did some, you know, fundraising to, to run the center. I mean, both center, the ICBC and the child development center. And I have to study also, I mean, I have to read my degree and, and so on. Uh, but we we have to practice every day as much as we can. I mean, this is the life in Sri Lanka, but now I'm not living in Sri Lanka. I am in Cambodia, but I am still a director looking up it and doing the fundraising here and send uh, the fund to the Sri Lanka and to run the center. But here, I also have a lot of work. I mean, at uh, Vipassana Durbury Center, you know, I have, have to get up in the early morning around uh, sometimes 3.30 or some. When I'm too tired, maybe at 4.30. So I have to meditate and I have to sweep, my, clean my room. And normally I follow the, the Japanese, you know, how to call it, the, the, the therapy, like the water therapy. So I drank up. I drank the water. It's so this a routine. So we have to, and I have to teach, and I have to, I have to su supervise a lot of work here. I have to check uh, the page. I have to greet the devotees. I have, yeah, a lot of stuff to uh, to be supervised. Uh, and, yeah. That's all, system. <laughs> wow, you are incredibly busy, but. Uh, do you ever get tired in a day? We're getting up at 4.30 a.m. every day. And what time, how many hours of sleep do you get? Uh, yeah, uh, normally I, I sleep at 10 or 10.30 or sometime when I'm mm. too tired. Uh, 9 o'clock is, is, is my time. So we have to get up uh, early morning. Uh, this is our routine. So, but but it, it you know, um, it's natural that we have to get tired. So when I'm tired, I have to rest. <laughs> yeah. You have to rest, of course. And what does your meditation routine look like every day? Okay, so uh, I love meditation. So, uh, you know, when I have time, I meditate a lot. But during the Thai schedule, I I have... I meditate only once a day, but the thing is, I'm trying my best to be mindful all the time. So being mindful from my perspective is, uh, because when we are talking about mindfulness, it, it, it's not a, it's not only about being mindful or being aware, it, it's about uh, everything. It's about everything, you know. Uh, when, when we train our mind to be in one object or in one point, any kinds of, of object. It can be bread, it can be, you know, while when we are walking, when we are eating. So, yeah, I'm trying my best to, to be mindful. And, and when I'm alone, when I'm sitting in the car or when I'm walking in, in the our small jungle, I keep reciting mantras or kinds of uh, verses. Like, for example, uh, may I be well and happy, may everyone be well and happy. So I keep repeating uh, you know, as much as I can, not to let my mind be distracted. But it's natural to be distracted, but we try to keep it on the track. So, but for me, sitting meditation is the best way, you know, to, to relax and to understand uh, or to empower ourselves. So, yeah, if you have any mm -hmm. follow-up questions. <laughs> yes, I do. I mean, I am... Um... I really love meditation and I understand how powerful it is. And I think that practicing meditation can truly transform a person's life. It can transform a community. It can transform the world. So I, I try to practice daily, but mm -hmm. usually what I hear with meditation is it is so hard to concentrate on nothing, right? And usually that's why people sometimes don't want to do it because they say it's just, it's just too hard. They can't, they can't 
achieve that state of mind of focusing on nothing. So can you give any advice to someone that wants to practice meditation, but is a beginner? Okay, so, yeah, before sharing the, you know, the basic ideas for beginners who are interested in, medita in meditation, I would like to share uh, the basic ideology of what is meditation when, when it comes to Buddhist uh, practice. The thing is people misunderstand that meditation is about blanking your mind, nothing, nothing, mm -hmm. and because... Uh, Meditation is about mental development. It's about cultivation. I'm sorry. Uh, meditation is about uh, cultivation, development. And what we cultivate during meditation is mental uh, powers or mental uh, strength, or I, I would call it the uh, mental positivities. And in, in Buddhism, we call it wholesomeness. So we cultivate a lot, like patience, concentration, mindfulness, wisdom, uh, loving-kindness, compassion, letting go, let it be like, I mean, uh, there are a lot of mental strengths uh, are cultivated during meditation. So when we understand that, but the thing is we need an object to be mindful. Sometimes we use the breath, sometimes we use, you know, sensation, sometimes we use thoughts, but the thing is, those objects are for cultivating our mental strength. So, and why we need that? That is, that is the question we have to ask. Why we need meditation? The answer is why we need to recharge our phone, uh, and why we need doing exercise, and why we do, why we need applying the cream to take care of our skin. So, mm -hmm. those thing is for for our need. But what people don't understand is. Uh, they, they, they don't think that the mind needs good food, you know, that is they don't understand, you know, you have to absorb the positivities into your mind to remain happy, to remain non-reactive, to remain patient, so we need, we need, we need that practice. So in order to do, in order to be mentally healthy or enjoy your, your, your well-being, you have to practice and you have to do it with understanding that I do this for my own happiness. What I'm doing is cultivating, you know, uh, the positivity. I mean, the, 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 the yeah, the positivities for myself. Uh, so, for the beginners, what I would like to share is you need a good inspiration before you start meditation. Okay, you very, you need very good inspiration, and that inspiration you must turn it into the aspiration. Why are you doing that? You need a desire, you know, to do that. Why I do this? Because there's a quote, and it's a very famous quote, do what you love, love what you do. So you need that. You need that desire to push you uh, to meditate. Why you do that? Uh, like, for me, like, meditation is for, it's kind of, I, this is my word, I, 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 I normally use that. It kinds of, uh, uh, Meditation is a transformation. I mean, it is a let me. It's a, a transformation of inner interpretation system. So this mm. this is my mm. my word like transformation of inner interpretation system. So uh, the way we look at world, the way we interpret the world must be changed if we want if we want to be happier if we want to be mentally stronger so we have what we have to change is change the way we think so meditation is, is for transformation the way you think uh, so so the inspiration or the desire you, you should have is i want to be happier that that is I, I i would like to suggest okay i want to change myself i have i want to transform myself i want uh, to you know to 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 understand myself more in in a different way so i think this is my suggestion you need you need that uh, in inspiration and the ba the basic practice is you can start uh, from observing the breath for 5 minutes you know you you have to enjoy the relaxation so before you uh, 
you you build a path into a deeper understanding of yourself you have to enjoy the relaxation like you know when you get angry or, or irritated or depressed or sad you know what what happened to your body so you learn you learn to enjoy that five minutes meditation relaxation so this is the journey you can start so when when you enjoy your practice when you are happy with your practice so this is the journey that we can start uh, for one hour two hour meditation practice so uh, this is my my suggestion and you can you can you can try any mm. kinds of meditation it it's up to you i i don't recommend this is good this is bad because you are the one uh, you must seek your own interest when it comes to the spirituality yeah sister absolutely i think that um that motivation of and the why behind mm -hmm. practicing meditation is so important if you were to practice meditation or seriously start thinking about your spiritual journey and path you cannot do it for someone else you have to do it it has to start from within and you need to make sure it's about you but then it affects positively the people around you right. or it affects positively your community it affects positively your relationship with your sister your brother i think that sometimes maybe i hear people saying i need to meditate to be nicer to my boyfriend or girlfriend <laughs> but master can you please talk about that how meditation it is very it's an individual journey but it affects positively your community and family and friends as well uh, yeah it, it's good you know the the power of the mind can be expanded you know and it can be uh, affected to everyone around us uh, you know either good or bad you know for example when you get angry you know bef bef i mean before you burning others before you scold others before you hit others you are burning yourself you know and this and this is the process this is the connection this is the oneness uh, oneness of of uh, you know evil mentality uh, evil mind so similarly the 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 you know the positive mind the wholesomeness has has the same uh, power we, it can be expanded it can be affect, uh, affected to everyone uh, you know as you as you mentioned so if if you are a very hot temper person you could, you can see what happened to yourself to your to your relationship to i mean everything it it will affect not only you uh that is why this is the quote i i like a lot like fix your mind fix your problems because the problems can be you know any form like relationship or the, with the colleagues or with with anyone so when when we fix this you know automatically our problems will be will be fixed so when when we try to understand this more our mind more and because when it comes to meditation we learn a lot uh, what i mean uh, the 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 hardest thing that people don't understand is uh, facing the reality rather than rejecting or uh, or escaping uh, from the reality so uh, this is how me this is how meditation helps you not not only that like when when we are very angry when when we are very uh, uh, irritated or depressed or sad or when we are in this position of i mean when we are in a state of you know full of negativities our mind is not clear it it is blurred so even our thinking is not that right that is why there is a saying i think you know that uh, done done desire when you are too angry you know or done done make a promise when you are too happy because when we are overwhelmed by our own emotions the decision the words we say the you know the action we take might be harmful or detrimental to to others so but when when we learn to practice meditation we understand you know we have more 
the understanding, we have more awareness, the wisdom uh, is there. So this is how, how meditation helps us. So like, we, we learn to, to understand ourselves. When we, are, when we understand ourselves, we don't uh, blame others for our suffering, we don't blame others for our failure. So, I mean, but it's about cultivation because uh, this is beyond the, beyond the intellectual uh, rationalization. It is uh, self-experience, it's, it's self-understanding. So, uh, this is how meditation helps fix your mind, fix your problem, because everything is, is your own mind. So, I think this is how meditation is helpful to every one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fix your mind, fix your problems. I like, I like that quote. And it's so true. It, you need to treat your mind like it's your physical body. You need to nourish it, care for it. Correct. You need to have some practice. And I think mm -hmm. if possible daily, it could be just five minutes of a simple meditation. You don't need to start with a two-hour morning meditation if you're a beginner you can just start slowly and a little bit at a time um master kasafa i am wondering when you're irritated or mad mm -hmm. what and you like you said your mind gets very mm -hmm. blurry and it's mm -hmm. hard to understand the reality of a situation mm. what is first what you what should you do in moments of irritation anger frustration for mm -hmm. example i'm fighting with my younger brother or i have a uh i'm really angry at someone at work what mm -hmm. could someone do in that moment to seek reality okay sister it you know it's hard to find to enjoy the calmness at that moment, but, but from my own experience, what I have been using is sense of humor. <clears throat> mm. I use sense of humor, like I, I, I told my anger that, like saying hello, uh, why are you get angry? What what happened to you? Like kinds <laughs> of kinds of sense of humor I I I did when when I get angry is one thing, but but if that time I I, I mean, because sometimes as monks you cannot use this technique in in the public. So, what I use is, you know, my smile. I try to smile uh, as much as I can, uh, and while I smile, I try to say, "May I be well and happy? May I be well and happy?" So this is like I mentally say it while I'm smiling. You know, I'm, I mentally say that while I'm smiling. Uh, so, this is this is the quick response, uh, you know, as of it, when when I am in a situation that make me uh, irritated. But sometimes we will reach a state that our mind is very exhausted, it's very tired because overwork. Because the more you think, the more you know tiredness you will experience. This is this is the nature of the mind. Not, not even the mind, as you, uh, you know, uh, mentioned earlier, that even our body sometimes we get tired, you know, overwork, you know, traveling the here and there, studied. So sometimes our body is very tired. So what we do is we need a rest. We sleep as much as we can. We do exercise. We take a very good food. And sometimes we take, a, you know, supplement or kinds of a vitamin C or vitamin, you know, you have to take care of your body when it is tired. So mentally, when, when our mind is tired, exhausted of different issues in life, or overthinking, overwork, stress, we need that relaxation. We need that break. We need that lesser time for our mind. So that's why, I, I mean, in Buddhism, we are recommended uh, to have a break, like one day or two days or a week. I mean, have, just have a rest, no, no using the phone, nothing, no responsibility, and just uh, meditating, uh, walking meditation, sitting meditation. So this is I, this is we do uh, as practitioners. You know, you 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 cannot be strong uh, 
like when you are in 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 a bad situation, sometimes it doesn't work. So you have to take a rest. You have to take a break. This is this is how it works. Mm. This is how I do, sister. Yeah. Mm. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. And when, just like you're saying, it's important to not take a rest when looking at your phone or looking at watching TV, watching the news. I think sometimes for me, I mm-hmm. take a rest and I look at my phone and I mm-hmm. look at the news and the mm-hmm. awful things that are happening in the world, like the war or the mm-hmm. pandemic or... Oh gun violence in America. There's so many awful things that happen in the world and it starts to get to my head. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just can't let it go. And it's almost addicting because I think I want to have an answer and I want to know everything all the time. But you're saying you must rest, not just your body, but your mind by doing Mm -hmm. yeah, nothing right? Meditating, not just don't pick up any type of technology, just be, yeah. Yeah. If, be in the moment. Uh, yeah, be in the moment. And if you, I mean, you, you know, you don't need to do like months that one week or like at, at least one hour or two hour if you don't meditate, but how, like how to remain relaxed, you know, reading the books or do the cleaning, you know, and keep uh, repeating some mantra like may I be well and happy or some quote you, you can repeat it again and again to let it uh, lay down in your in your unconsciousness so this is the practice because the more you watch the more uh, you know because the stories you know of ourselves and the stories in the world are related to emotions and different thoughts so thoughts and emotions sometimes make our mind tired. That is why we need to detach uh, from uh, them temporarily and let our mind rest, have a rest. Mm. But at the beginning, what is hard. your favorite? Uh, well, what is your favorite activity to do when you're resting? What's your? What do you like to do? Cleaning? Do you like to meditate? What? What do you like to do? Uh, yeah, med- meditation is my priority. But besides meditation, I like mm. to walk in, in in the nature. I like to feed the fish. So we, we have a lot of fish there in in our temple. And sometimes I said I, I I like cleaning. You know, sweeping the compound, cleaning the Buddha statue. So this is this is what I do. And I just. Uh, put everything like my phone, my computer in my room, I lock it, so I go, I will spend like one hour, two hours, this is what I do. But I have a daily, I have a daily routine from five o'clock to six, normally I walk and do some exercise and enjoy the environment and being in, in the nature. So this is, you know, I have a philosophy that our body needs a food, you know, a good food, or sometimes you do exercise. And similarly, our mind need a very good food every day. So uh, you have to practice every day. So the food for the mind is not only meditation. You have to expose yourself uh, in the nature, being in the nature, uh, or rendering, you know, rendering services to others. Like I said, cleaning or help helping others without using technology. So it, it those are component of of spirituality uh, to make your mind. Uh, you know, mental, your mind stronger and stronger. So this is what I understand from my own practice. Mm. Oh, I love, I love listening to you. You're giving me some great wisdom because I sometimes forget to take a walk outside or be in nature because you get busy with work and your life, your social life, or you get busy in social media and you forget that sometimes the most important things you're not doing. You're not in nature or you're not, um, you know, sitting by yourself. I like to journal a lot. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I forget to journal, you know, it's interesting how your mind goes to something that isn't good for what you need in the Mm -hmm. moment. So I, yeah, I, I really appreciate 
listening to this. I think it's very, very precious advice. Um, but Master, just one last question before we end our conversation today. Um, you gave me such a beautiful book recommendation on Buddhist, Buddhist philosophy and mm -hmm. Buddhist religion. Um, mm -hmm. For listeners that are interested in Buddhism or meditation, where is a good place to start and learn about this philosophy, learn about this practice? Do you have any tools or recommendations, especially for beginners? Mm -hmm. For the beginners, uh, to learn Buddhism and practice meditation, I think Sri Lanka and Burma, and I think Thailand uh, is, is, is okay, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, Burma, Sri Lanka, uh, are good place, are good places to go and, and, and practice. And besides that, we have, uh, you know, um, you know, Taiwan. And I mean, even t uh, Tibet. I think those are good uh, places to go and practice meditation. And let me add this: that uh, you mentioned about the mind, but the thing is, uh, during meditation, I mean, by practice meditation, what we are training our mind is. We train to be the leader of the mind because sometimes our mind is very tricky, it's very misleading, it's very, you know, uh, deceptive. That, that is why people uh, don't like to meditate and sometimes they are deluded, like they, they don't train themselves to engage in, in so good things that they love to do. So that, that's why we fail sometimes. But it happens to everyone, but when we know, when we are aware, we have to come back to the track. So yeah, that, mm. that's all. Awesome. Mm. Thank you so much, Master. And I really appreciate your time and wisdom. It was such an honor and pleasure to have this conversation with you. And just for my listeners, where can they find your um, information and your center in uh, Cambodia. Do you have a website or anything that they can follow? We have a website, but it is in Khmer. Uh, mm. uh, I'm sorry, there's a page. <laughs> Normally the famous, I'm sorry, not, not a website. It's a page. Uh, it is Vipassana Durgodi Center. And we have a Facebook account. But I think uh, for international, uh, I mean for, for foreign practitioners and foreign the foreigners who are interested in, 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 in coming to Cambodia to know our center, you can directly uh, contact me. I think I have my Facebook account that we cook uh, Yeah. And my email, I think you know my email. So like you can contact me directly yes. if you want to come to our center to learn more. Oh, thank you. Yes. I'll add your information on the, the episode notes at the end. So thank you so, so much, Master. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. And thank you very much again for inviting me. And thank you for your time. And thank you for your effort for, for creating, uh, creating such platform for us to share our story. So take care of yourself mm -hmm. and keep meditating it as much as you can. I will. And I want to say uh, to you that if you have any questions, uh, you want to know, and if you want to learn more, if you want to learn more about Buddhism and meditation, and to want to know about, my, you know, my spiritual journey, please feel free uh, to ask me and to text me. Mm. Thank you so much, Master. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.